Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. Uh, you're still watching The Breakfast Show live on Nile TV International. It's now time uh, for a second topic of discussion for today. And as we noted earlier in our introduction, we're going to be shedding the light on the uh, record-breaking achievement of the Suez uh, Canal Authority, uh, making an annual revenue for the first time in its history of $7 billion. US dollars. And to shed more light on this topic, we're most delighted to be joined over the phone by Dr. Hassan Nageti, strategic uh, planning uh, expert. Um, a very good morning, uh, doctor, and thank you so much for joining us on The Breakfast Show. Doctor, do you have my voice? Dr. Hassan? Yes, uh, and uh, dear viewers, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be shedding the light on the uh, achievement of the uh, Suez Canal uh, Authority as it has achieved the highest monthly revenue in its history during May, making, marking rather an increase of 23% 23, 23 on a year-on-year -year basis to reach $657 million, according to the Chairman and Managing Director of the Suez Canal Authority, uh, Admiral General Osama Rabia, and in a televised statement, uh, 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 Osama Rabia said that the current indicators of the navigation movement in the canal give a clear in indication uh, that the navigation movement in the canal uh, has played a vital role to ensure the sustainability and s stability of supply chains. And uh, I believe we're being joined now over the phone by Dr. Hassan Nageti, strategic planning experts. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, sir, on The Breakfast Show. Thank you. Uh, doctor, uh, as a strategic planning expert, how do you see the state's strategy that has led to the unprecedented increase of the revenues in the Suez Canal uh, reaching or topping $7 billion? Okay. Uh, let me uh, just say something in the beginning. I was part of the strategic consortium that consists of uh, uh, four major bridging companies that uh, was responsible for implementing the new source canal. So at that time, when we start uh, the project, we had a plan uh, to do it in one year, and uh, we're very happy to uh, say that uh, we finalized it almost in 10 months, which is one of the highest a uh, record in bridging industry uh, worldwide to finalize almost 90 kilometers were more than 200 million uh, bridging activities. That's uh, first of all. The second uh, thing I would like to mention, Source Canal is a big organization. When you start uh, a, a project like this, it's not uh, just based on uh, bottom line and top line on how much it will generate, this is not the only thing. It's more than just generating money. Uh, it's all about uh, how you contribute to the ease of the global trade worldwide between all countries. So it's not like a company who make a bottom line profit and that's it. So uh, our contribution to the whole world was very uh, remarkable. Uh, the second thing, according to the visibility study of the New South Canal project, it was uh, aimed that we will generate almost double. At that time, it was a five billion, and we were aiming to reach to almost eleven billion after the, uh, the finishing of the project. However, due to the, to the Yemen war and due to some issue in the Red Sea from uh, El Houthi group and the slowing down of the global trade, we were slowly uh, increasing the revenue to almost 5.6 and then 6 billion. But now, after the Ukrainian war and the increasing of the global trade, we reached to a seven billion, which is very good return for the South Canal. However, it's not the only one. Uh, Dr. Hassan, uh, just speaking on what you have just uh, said and speaking about the uh, Russian-Ukrainian 
uh, war. Uh, do you believe uh, that uh, this uh, crisis has uh, played a role or impacted the revenues of the Suez Canal? Definitely. Uh, war is not something good, but uh, due to the disturbance that happened in the energy market and gas and oil industry and uh, the lack of supply within Europe, and they start looking at different uh, destinations like from uh, Gulf and from Qatar to ensure the, uh, the proper supply to Europe. Uh, also, in addition to the big supply, uh, big supply of, uh, you know, uh, some, uh, uh, something regarding, um, for example, the agriculture uh, products uh, from uh, Ukraine and Russia also to other Middle East and African countries. All of this has really helped a lot in increasing the traffic of the global trade uh, for Suez Canal uh, in both directions. And thanks to the new Suez Canal that we have, we reduced the traffic time from uh, almost 22 hours uh, for the shipment to less than 11 hours. Uh, so that's really helped in speeding up the traffic and at the same time increasing the revenue. So definitely, Ukraine Russian world has a big impact on, uh, on the traffic of the Suez Canal uh, today. Hopefully, uh, this will continue for uh, maybe till the end of the year, which we will see more high income to Suez Canal on that uh, area. Uh, in addition to this, the military troops also uh, moving from uh, one destination to other also has some impact on the income of the Suez Canal. Yes, uh, indeed, uh, Dr. Hassan. Also, uh, if you can uh, uh, please elaborate on the vital role that the Suez Canal is playing as a lifeline for the passage of uh, goods and commodities uh, uh, given uh, the uh, Russian-Ukrainian uh, crisis. And, of course, this uh, has uh, followed the unprecedented uh, global emergency of COVID-19. If you can tell us about that. Um, just to answer that question, sir, just imagine that we don't have Suez Canal. It's, uh, it's not there. How do you think we will manage? It will be very difficult. Uh, the Suez Canal is a vital uh, is a vital passage from east to west and from north to south, and serving many uh, countries in Africa, in Gulf area, in Far East to Europe. So, uh, without that uh, that uh, that facility of the Suez Canal, things will get very uh, frustrated. So I believe the Suez Canal is playing a vital role in, 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 in really uh, making uh, the global trade uh, going smoothly and, uh, and on the same time uh, uh, helping the three countries uh, from one area to one area, like what happened in the gas supply or the oil energy supply from the Gulf to Europe, uh, which is really uh, facilitate, uh, like I say, the flowers of uh, the global trade, uh, trade industry worldwide, especially with the high security measurements in Suez Canal due to the expansion and due to the new Suez uh, Canal uh, that opened on 5th of August. Uh, uh, 2013, that was really a major step that helping uh, all countries and um, especially Egypt and the country on the Red Sea, uh, in the Red Sea. And one more thing, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about sustainability. Uh, hopefully, uh, there will be uh, more income to come after the new economical uh, uh, zone that we are building in the east port uh, bank of the Suez Canal. 
that would really increase the the income of Egypt. When you start finalizing this uh, zoned area, especially with a lot of assembly industry and a lot of uh, 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 new uh, trade between uh, industry city uh, around Egypt. Uh, so we're talking about car assembly, we're talking about cotton industry and uh, uh, clothes industry and a lot of spare parts that would really uh, uh, will help uh, a lot in making trade traffic uh, much easier and hopefully more profitable to Egypt in the future. Yes, uh, indeed, uh, Dr. Hassan uh, Nagati, a strategic uh, planning expert. Uh, we really appreciate your insight and thank you so much for being with us on The Breakfast Show. And dear viewers, by this, we wrap up today's episode of The Breakfast Show. Uh, you were in the company of myself, Karim Gamaleddin, and my colleague, Amal Mukhtar. Until we meet again, this is goodbye.